Hello everyone and welcome to another lecture in the topic of SEMI and today we are speaking about a very interesting lecture that many of you are waiting for which is STEMI or pericarditis a very common question that many of you is asking himself when you see a patient with diffuse ST elevation is it STEMI or just pericarditis and so our IO today is to learn the characteristic features of acute pericarditis and to learn how to differentiate STEMI from acute pericarditis. First of all, what are the characteristic STG features of pericarditis? The most important feature is the presence of diffuse ST elevation, which is usually concave, associated with PR depression. And of course, we all remember the notion of that the concave ST elevation is more suggestive of pericarditis, like a concave of smiley face, signifying good prognosis, Plus another important sign, which is a knuckle sign, which is a reverse to the other leads, as it shows ST depression and PR elevation in AVR plus minus in V1. As we can see here in this ECG, we can see here diffuse ST elevation involving lead 1, 2, and AVL, and also involving the precordial leads from V2 to V6. So we can see here diffuse ST elevation associated with PR segment depression in the same leads. Also, we can see here that there is ST depression in AVR associated with PR segment elevation, and here it is only restricted to AVR. So this feature, diffuse ST elevation with PR depression plus a knuckle sign, are suggestive of acute pericarditis. In this ECG also, we can see here that there is diffuse ST elevation also in the same leads as before, plus ST depression in AVR and in V1, which is of course more suggestive of acute pericarditis. And so, this ECG is highly suggestive of acute pericarditis rather than diagnosing that this patient has ST elevation involving the anterior leads, inferior leads, lateral leads. No, it is just diffuse ST elevation and PR depression of pericarditis. In this ECG as well, we can see here that there is diffuse ST elevation here, and most of the ECGs will show that these leads, like the 1, 2, ADL, and recorded leads are involved. And we can see the ST depression here in EVR, not involving V1. So also this ACG is very suggestive of acute pericarditis. Let's see what are the evolution changes of pericarditis time or the temporal change. Stage 1, there is widespread ST elevation and PR depression in blades with reciprocal change in EVR. And this usually occurs in the first two weeks after affection of the pericardial membranes. Then stage 2, ST segment normalize and become isoelectric with generalized T wave flattening and this usually occur within 1 to 3 weeks. Stage 3, the patient has flattened T wave that becomes inverted within 3 to 6 weeks. So this change of course takes longer time and then everything returns to normal after about more than 1 to 2 months. So it may take more and long time in order for the AT chain to normalize. But remember, this temporal ECG change may not follow the typical pattern, especially that most of these patients will be diagnosed early and so they will be started on anti-inflammatory medications like non and anti-inflammatory drug called chesine, aspirin, and so these changes will not follow the same temporal change that I mentioned here. But this is, of course, the most common change that we mentioned in literature regarding the temporal evolution of ECG and pericarditis as we mentioned here. Let's ask ourselves the most common question. When you mention that the patient has ST elevation and PR depression, in comparison to what? How can I say that the ST elevated and the PR is depressed? Why don't I say that PR is normal and the ST segment is elevated or the reverse? The PR segment is depressed and ST segment is normal. Of course, the answer is, as we learned in the lecture of ECG interpretation, it is the TP segment. The TP segment is a segment in which there is no electrical activity inside the heart because it's after the end of ventricular depolarization and before the start of atrial depolarization. And so this straight segment between the end of T wave and the next P wave is a phase that I can compare the ST segment and PR segment to in order to decide whether they are elevated or depressed. So as we can see here in this ECG, of course, PR segment is depressed in V6 and ST segment is elevated in comparison to the TP segments. So what are the key factors in differentiating pericarditis from STEMI? Of course, the widespread ST elevation and PR depression involving lead 1, 2, 3, AVL, maybe also AVF, and precordial leads usually from V2 to V6, and the ST depression and PR elevation AVR plus minus 
v1 and of course from the ESC guidelines in 2015 of management of pericardial disease we can find here that the new widespread ST elevation or PR depression in ACG is mentioned as one of the criteria to diagnose pericarditis as we need two of four criteria one of them is the ACG changes as the widespread ST elevation or PR depression in the ECG and so these typical ECG genes are very important and they are reported in up to 60% of cases so not all patients with pericarditis will have these easy changes, but in most of the cases you will find them. And diffuse ST elevation is much more important than the knuckle sign because knuckle signs sometimes may occur myocardial ischemia, but diffuse ST elevation and PR depression should raise suspicion of pericarditis. So of course this was quoted from the guidelines that the widespread ST elevation has been reported as a typical hallmark sign of acute pericarditis. However, these changes signify inflammation of the visceral pericardium because the parietal pericardium itself is electrically inert. So the inflammation of the epicardial surface as it is related to the visceral pericardium leads to these ACG changes, not the parietal pericardium. So, of course, we all learned that concave ST elevation is suggestive of pericarditis and convex ST elevation is suggestive of STEMI. Is this true or not? Of course, we all know that the concave is a good prognosis and convex is a bad prognosis as we signify or refer to by the smiley face and the sad face. But actually, it is not conclusive in the diagnosis and STEMI may show concave ST elevation. So please don't jump to a diagnosis of pericarditis just because the patient has concave ST elevation and so it is referring to the smiley face. So it is a good prognosis and so it is pericarditis. No you will omit a diagnosis of STEMI, so please don't follow this notion. Yes, it is very famous, written in some literature, but not conclusive in the diagnosis and don't depend solely on it. Now we have another comparison of pericarditis versus early repolarization pattern. Sometimes someone may say it is early repolarization pattern, which is a benign pattern. At this time, we can use something called the ratio of ST elevation and T wave. As we can compare the magnitude of ST elevation to the amplitude of T wave. And mostly, in pericarditis, it will be more than 0.25, whereas in early repolarization, it will be less, less than 0.25. And this signifies that the ST elevation is higher in pericarditis rather than in early repolarization patterns. So, usually, pericarditis will show significant ST elevation in comparison to early repolarization pattern. Beside that PR depression and the diffuse ST elevation would be very common in pericarditis, whereas in early repolarization, no PR depression, and usually it is limited to the precordial leads in P9 early repolarization pattern. Let's ask ourselves another question. Can the ECG features of pericarditis be localized to one territory, or as we call localized or patchy pericarditis? Before I say yes, you should ask yourself, why is it localized? Maybe it is localized to the inferior leads, as the inferior leads are showing a C elevation PR depression only, or the chest leads are showing a C elevation PR depression. Why it is localized to these ECG leads? Is it on top of transmural MI? Oh wow, it is early post MI pericarditis. So not, don't jump to a diagnosis of localized or patch pericarditis and discharge a patient because most probably this patient has transmural MI mostly due to STEMI and that's why he is having now pericarditic changes in his ECG and he may be describing a typical chest pain suggestive of pericarditis radiating to the trapezius ridge which of course is suggested to the pericarditis radiation to the trapezius ridge and so this patient most probably has completed myocardial infarction and so he is not or he was not revascularized and so he would need CCU admission so please if you find that the ACG change of pericarditis are localized to one territory, suspect that this pericarditis was on top of transmural MI, or as we call early post MI pericarditis, and so this patient is a high risk patient because he is non revascularized myocardial infarction. But after all these ECG features, I'm still in doubt and I don't know whether it is pericarditis or STEMI. At this time, it is STEMI after proof otherwise. If you are still in doubt, 
you are not sure that this is pericarditis, please don't discharge a patient on anti-inflammatory medication based on diagnosis of pericarditis if you are not sure. If you are suspecting that the AC changes are not conclusive of pericarditis or the patient is having typical angina pain, please deal with the patient as a STEMI and go to coronary angiography to exclude whether it is a STEMI or pericarditis. Remember, patient with pericarditis misdiagnosed as a STEMI Risk of unnecessary invasive angiography is the only risk for them if they were showing normal coronaries. But if the patient was a STEMI and misdiagnosed as pericarditis at this time, there is a great risk of completed STEMI with a possible post-MI complication like arrhythmic complication, mechanical complication, heart failure, and of course risk of mortality because you misdiagnosed the STEMI as pericarditis. So whenever you are in doubt, deal with the patient as STEMI, not pericarditis to exclude. So at the end of our lecture, we learned today the characteristic ECG features of acute pericarditis, and we answered this question how to differentiate STEMI from acute pericarditis by ECG in the ER, and our take home message, diffuse ST elevation with PR depression plus the knuckle sign, raise suspicion of acute pericarditis, but if you are in doubt, deal with the patient as STEMI until proved otherwise. Thank you very much for your watching.